next to last session of the United Nations Conference, Britain's Lord Halifax presiding, pays tribute to Secretary of State Statinius, head of America's delegation and organizer of the successful nine-week meeting. Mr. Statinius, who has now been named United States representative to the new international organization, is presented with a scroll in recognition of his efforts. history-making moment as Lord Halifax calls for a standing vote on the approval of the Charter of International Organization and the heads of the 50 United Nations delegations rise to be counted. The vote is unanimous. <laughs> As the session adjourns, delegates burst into applause. The charter of a new world is born. Arriving in San Francisco for the final conference session is President Harry S. Truman. He is met by Mr. Statinius with the U.S. delegates and the chiefs of the 49 other delegations. Among them, Field Marshal Jan Christian Smuts, Premier of South Africa, and the Prime Minister of Canada, Mr. Mackenzie King. President Truman leaves for a brief tour through San Francisco. His is the first visit to San Francisco by a chief executive in seven years. Half a million citizens turn out to hail the presidential motorcade. Mr. Truman arrives, 63 days of concerted international effort are climaxed by the signing of the United Nations Charter. First to sign is China, the first nation that suffered Axis aggression. Dr. Wellington Ku signs with a traditional Chinese brush. The delegation of the Soviet Union, Ambassador Andrei Gromyko signs for Russia. Great Britain is represented by her delegation chairman, Lord Halifax. The Republic of France, acting delegation chairman, Joseph Paul Boncourt. Thirty-eight of fifty nations to sign is the United States of America. Secretary of State Statinius. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all aware that this is an extremely historic occasion. The Charter for World Peace has been completed. But this is not the end, it is only the beginning. The great task lies before us. And it is our solemn and our sacred duty to see to it that the United Nations comes into, into being and fulfills its promise. With faith in our cause and goodwill in our hearts and determination to work unceasingly toward this end, I am confident that with God's help, we shall reach our goal. Senator Connolly is next to sign for the United States. Senator Arthur Vandenberg. Commander Harold Stassen, former governor of Minnesota. A vital and a difficult job, well done. Appearing before the last formal session of the United Nations Conference, President Truman congratulates the 280 delegates and expresses the world's hopes for the new international organization. The Charter 
of the United Nations, which you are now signing, is a solid structure upon which we can build for a better world. History will honor you for it. Between the victory in Europe and the final victory in Japan, in this most destructive of all wars, you have won a victory against war itself. If we had had this charter a few years ago, and above all, the will to use it, millions now dead would be alive. If we should falter in the future in our will to use it, millions now living will surely die. Now there's a time for making plans. And there's a time for action. The time for action is here now. <laughs> Let us, therefore, each in his own nation and according to its own way, seek immediate approval of this charter and make it a living thing. By this charter, you have moved toward the goal for which that gallant leader in this second world struggle worked and fought and gave his life, Franklin D. Roosevelt. <laughs> this new structure of peace is rising upon strong foundations. Let us not fail to grasp this supreme chance to establish a worldwide rule of reason, to create an enduring peace under the guidance of God. On a note of enthusiasm unequaled among nations in all history, the San Francisco Conference is adjourned. In the United States Congress and among free people everywhere, the efforts of the chief architect of the United Nations are remembered. Remembered, too, are the words he spoke shortly before he died on world organization, expressing his confidence that Congress and the American people will accept the results of this conference as the beginning of a permanent structure of peace upon which we can begin to build under God that better world in which our children and grandchildren, yours and mine, children and grandchildren of the whole world must live.